we are going to talk about how you can rethink your onboarding using game thinking and get those breakthrough product results that we all need when we're struggling with tough problems. So tonight, I want to tell you a story, a story about the early days of Netflix. Now, about a decade ago, Netflix was still making the transition from being primarily DVDs to being a streaming service. This was back when the DVD queue was a big part of things. And uh, Netflix was making a lot of very smart moves and changes, including setting up their product innovation group. And that was the group I worked with. Uh, a longtime colleague of mine who had come from Yahoo, Michael Spiegelman, brought me in to help deal with some really tough problems that the team was having. Now, this was a crack team who was very, very good at measuring the analytics of the customer experience. And what we all saw was there was a sharp drop-off after two months of subscription. People were subscribing, trying it for two months, and a lot of them, many more than we wanted to, were dropping off, and it was particular to that point. So we decided to see what we could do to push over that point. And the team had tried a lot of local issues, you know, trying this growth hack and this tweak to the UX. And what they realized and how they expressed it to me was that they were really caught up in local maxima or local maximum, which is a idea from statistics that really talks about, and this was their situation, You've optimized where you can in your design. If you're, for instance, measuring um, a particular page and button clicks on a particular page, you can optimize that page. You can optimize that button. You can optimize for conversion through that page. And that can get you at local maxima where you're very optimized. But the larger issues, which is what Netflix was struggling, the larger issues of why are people dropping off after two months, you can't get there with these local methods. You just can't. You have to pop up and see things from a different point of view. And it's the same in mathematics as it is in product design. So what we did was we applied the techniques of game thinking. We interviewed several different cohorts of super fans, people that were avidly using the service and people that were avid users but had quit. And we discovered a lot of reasons why onboarding wasn't working for them. Now, there's a longer version of this case study that's part of our paid programs. And if you participate, you'll get access to that as well. And where we go into detail about all those different issues that came up. But I'm just going to share a couple with you now that are great take homes for you that you can apply to what you're doing. So the way we tackled this is we built a cross-functional team. It was absolutely imperative that we had people from growth, people from product, people from marketing, people from customer support and customer success, all of that together in a room to talk about the solutions. Because when you're dealing with longer term engagement, when you're dealing with not just getting through quick little things, you really need a cross-functional approach to get around those local mac maxima. So we gathered together and one of the problems that was top of mind for all of us was that recommendations often get confused when there's multiple users. Now the solution for that turned into what we now have in Netflix that we're familiar with, which is who's watching IDs. At the time, Netflix didn't have that. So we had to start to come up with how can we solve this? And there's many different ways to do it but self-selecting IDs and letting those evolve naturally and add them naturally, we had the beginnings of that in this project and it now grew into this very successful system. Another problem that we ran into was that users didn't understand why certain shows were being recommended. At that time, Netflix was much more dependent on rating systems. It had you rate many, many shows when you got started to get you started and then um, it would have you rate them periodically as well. Now, Netflix has evolved far beyond that. 
and there's a lot more algorithmic knowledge and smarts under the hood. But it's still important for people to understand why are you showing me this? It builds trust and trust, as we all know, is a huge part of what makes us keep using a service. So what we did at the time, and these were actually some of the original sketches that turned into a feature, is when you came back to Netflix, when you had watched a show and you revisited it, we asked you to rate it to reveal suggestions. And once you rated it, we would then fill in those little slots with suggestions to show you why in a very clear, immediate way you were getting suggestions. Now, Netflix has evolved beyond that, but that one technique was a completely new idea that came out of understanding what the issue was people were having. And no big surprise, it wasn't what we thought it was. So today, Netflix has evolved and it looks more like this. And you'll see this thumbs up, thumbs down icon, which has replaced that five-star rating system. Now, that's some, this is something you'll see a lot. YouTube used to have a five-star rating as well, and they simplified down to thumbs up, thumbs down. This is a common evolution you'll see in these large-scale social systems. But back when Netflix was really struggling through a very tough transition and didn't look nearly as much like the huge winner that it is today, Netflix applied these techniques to get out of a rut they were in, act smarter, and start to do the kind of product innovation that they're now known for. So the lesson here is you can't always solve extended engagement problems with discrete metrics. And next week, Vicki Tan is gonna talk more about that as well. She's a designer who's worked at Headspace, Lyft, and Google. And this story about Netflix today was sparked when I had a conversation with Vicki about how this issue almost caused them to crater their engagement at Headspace. But by bringing the team together, taking a cross-functional approach and really driving toward what the users wanted, they were able to go beyond discrete metrics and solve their engagement problem and lift their two week and one month retention. So if you don't know me already, I'm Amy Jo Kim. I'm a game designer, a startup coach, and an entrepreneur. I've worked with startups, game studios, and major global brands to help them drive deep engagement from the ground up. And a diverse set of innovative worldwide hits sprinkled the time that I've been designing multiplayer systems. Each of these massive hits leveraged the fundamental steps of game thinking. And you can too. Hey there, innovators. Are you looking for a better, faster way to bring your product idea to life? Are you eager to learn the insider secrets behind innovative hits that sold millions of copies and broke through to the mainstream? The Game Thinking Design Sprint is for you. In this five-day virtual training program, you'll master the five foundational steps of game thinking and learn how this powerful system can deliver massive results for your business. Learn how hit product designers identify their hot core super fans, test prototypes quickly, and design a mastery path that keeps their customers coming back. Each day, you'll learn the ropes on your own schedule, right from your home or office, with short, engaging video lessons and streamlined step-by-step -step templates that guide you towards success. You'll get daily hands-on coaching and support from me, plus other guest luminaries, so that all your questions get answered and you make rapid progress throughout your sprint. And after those five days, we give you a full month of follow-up coaching and support to guide you as you implement these powerful ideas into your business. This is a hands-on program where you will get lots of individual attention. If you wanna learn the cutting edge design system, that's used by global brands and startups worldwide. Grab your seat for the Game Thinking Design Sprint today. I look forward to getting a chance to work with you. See you on the inside.
So, Scott, uh, now is the time for an AMA. So I would love to answer any questions that you have. Uh, we, I think we got some questions beforehand um, from our other channels. And if there's any questions live, we would love to answer them as well. So Scott, what questions are coming in? Felipe says, uh, well, how do I find my uh, super users? I've, I haven't ever done any uh, customer discovery or user research. Is that something I can do? That's such a good question. What I find is that a lot of people that think this sounds like a great idea don't do it simply because they don't know how. And it can be really tricky to find your super users. If you've purchased our Game Thinking book, which is available on Amazon, it's a bestseller, much to my delight, we actually walk you through what to do. But if you take the design sprint or any of our other programs, but in particular, the design sprints coming up, we will work with you side by side to figure out how to find them because it can be a little tricky. You have to decide what channel am I gonna use for outreach? And pretty much you wanna go where they are. Who do I think they are and what evidence do I have to support that? Do I have several cohorts? If so, how can I do outreach simultaneously and figure out which cohort is the best? Um, all of that goes back to step one, which we do on day one of the sprint, which is to get your hypotheses in order and really understand, here's our current thinking, here's a snapshot, now let's go test it. So finding your super, anybody can find their super fans. It can be a little bit tricky and that's why we've developed this step-by-step -step process and why we offer programs to help you go through it. it. We can help you accomplish in two or three days what would otherwise take you two or three months at least in terms of nailing down who your super fans are and understanding how to get the info from them you need to build the right product. Margie has a very practical question. The first week sounds really intense, five days of of a lot of learning, how much time will it take per day or how much time should I allow for? That's a great question. We've, this is for, this program is for working professionals. So we've structured it in a way where you can take it very flexibly to meet your needs. If you are, we meet for one hour a day and you will be placed in a small group meeting so you will get personalized attention. And so you'll need to spend one hour per day working on this. There's also approximately a half hour of material to consume to prep for each day. So if you have an hour and a half to two hours per day during that week, that's everything you need to learn the ropes, get a tremendous amount out of it, and then go ahead and practice it in the future. And we've done that specifically because a lot of the people that are excited about this are working a full-time job and developing a project on the side. And this is absolutely fantastic for that. Now we have another cohort in our people who are excited about it, which is people running startups that have a small team, they're very budget conscious and they understand that time is money. So for those people, um, you can spend lots of time and make huge amounts of progress you can absorb the materials beforehand, but we're giving you templates that say, do this first, do this next, do this next. All you have to do during the week is do the first element of each template. We've laid it out so you can get that done quickly and really understand what's happening. But if you're working on a startup and you wanna make massive progress, you can fill out more of the template. You can work on it for longer. You can bring that to your meeting and share more and get deeper and more substantial feedback, which then vaults you into the next day's work. So if you are working on a project full-time and you're wondering, will this work for my project? This is rocket fuel for your project. You could spend all your time and this would be phenomenal. And then the follow-up coaching will be even more valuable. If you wanna learn the ropes of game thinking, you only have an hour or two a day, and some days maybe you couldn't even make it. Maybe one day you're out, not a problem. All the meetings are recorded. We can answer your questions ahead of time, just send them. 
and you can go through the week and get a huge amount of value without a problem. You still get all the pre-recorded videos that teach you the rope. You get all the recorded meetings from your group and you get that follow-up month of coaching as well, which is flexible and works with your time schedule. So it is an intense week. You can take it lightly, you can take it deeply, and it's set up to really be customizable to work for you, particularly with the way the material is structured. Our goal isn't just to accelerate you during that one week. Our goal is to accelerate you for life. I have a question from Jan. What industries does it apply to? I mean, what, who, what sort of industries have used it? That's such a great question. So game thinking is for anyone that wants to build a product that drives long-term engagement. Um, the industries that have had great success with game thinking include absolutely games. In fact, many game designers use game thinking because it's excellent practices and goes beyond what a lot of game designers know. So it is very, very popular in gaming. Actually, one of my new clients is a very well-known casual gaming company, and they're going to use game thinking to innovate smarter. So absolutely gaming. Healthcare, it's huge in healthcare. There's a lot, um, Appify's one app, Replica's another app. Um, I'm currently working with a company that does interventions for uh, early onset dementia. So there are many, many applications of game thinking in healthcare. That's one of the ripest areas. Um, entertainment in general, people that are building entertainment websites are using game thinking to figure out what to build and what mastery looks like. I did an engagement for the New York Times helping them structure the experience that happens beyond their paywall, the subscription experience. That's another example of where game thinking works. Um, education, game thinking is huge in education. Many of our most passionate advocates and followers are working in education. They're homeschooling moms, they're teachers. I know Scott, you did a big project in education this year and we'll go into that a little bit later. Right. So, if you work at all in education, whether it's gaming, games like education, or just making your, your educational materials more effective and leading your students toward mastery, highly effective. Game thinking works in manufacturing. I've had manufacturing uh, clients use it to improve their processes. Game thinking is amazing for SaaS products, B2B SaaS businesses, which are anything that involves a subscription or an ongoing if your business model is built around longer term engagement, such as a subscription, game thinking is gold for you. It will help you really nail that opportunity. All right, so we've come to the end of our live stream. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you enjoyed hearing about Netflix and learning about what a game thinking design sprint can do for you. So if, you, if what you really need is guidance and you're excited about working with me, hands-on on your project and to learn these ideas and skyrocket your progress and your success, because that's what happens always reliably, then I want you to go to gamethinking.io slash sprint and check it out and really don't let this opportunity go by to join us. It starts on September 30th. So if you wanna think about it and go back and talk to your colleagues, if you work for a company, you can probably get this covered with your training budget. We have a, pay, we have a link on gamethinking.io slash sprint in the FAQ that will give you everything you need to go to your boss and get this covered. This is phenomenal education. This is exactly what you need to save your team time and stress and build the right product for the right people. Whether you're pivoting and you have an existing product or you're doing something brand new, I would love to get these powerful tools into your hands and help you and see you succeed. So I look forward to seeing you on the inside in the Game Thinking Sprint and we'll also see you right here next week on Game Thinking TV. Take care.